Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. We're at the halfway point here because we are at question at number five, five out of ten, on the 2008 Manitoba Math Contest. So, question five's got this nice big picture associated with it. A fenced property has the shape of a rhombus, as in the figure. The length of each side of the rhombus is 20 meters. A dog outside the property is tethered to one corner uh, of the rhombus. One corner of the rhombus as shown. Okay, there's our dog with the corner of the rhombus. Uh, if the dog's leash is 30 meters long, how large an area can the dog cover? Surely they didn't mean to include this picture because that kind of takes the joy out of it. Um, I've seen a similar question like this. I can't remember if it was a past Waterloo contest or a... Uh, one of those Canadian National Math League contests from way, way back when. And they had a similar sort of setup. I get the feeling it was like a fryer that had something like this. Anyway, um, yeah, so you're supposed to realize that the dog, if he pulled his leash tight, he could sweep out circular arcs. Now, obviously, if he, he, can't, full, he can't walk in a full circle, there's a, a shed, uh, sorry, a fenced property uh, in the way here. But he could pull his leash tight against the sides here. And so he can sweep out a 30-meter circular arc uh, at, with a full 240-degree angle, because 120 inside here. And then the leash can still bend around the corner a little bit. But obviously, 20 meters of the leash is already taken up being pulled uh, tight against the fence. So he's only got 10 meters left here. And that's the general idea, but... Uh, they included the picture for us, so we didn't have to work all that out. So I guess we just need to figure out the area of these these arcs here and without much explanation. Which I think is a shame. It sort of robs us of something that we could be doing. Uh, let's put this a bit more center. There we go. So our rhombus. So he gets, uh, it's 240 degrees here, and it's a 30 meter circular arc. Why? Because it's 120 degrees here, 120 degrees here. Each of these is going to be 60 degrees. I think they even showed us that on the picture as well. Ah, they did not. Okay, so that's at least something we could do. And then um, this is going to be 10 meters, so it's only going to pull halfway across. So... If it were longer, if it were something like 30 meters still left out here, so if it was 50 meters, the original thing, then we could even pull here and get uh, some even further overlap, more circular arcs. But it's not that big of a question there. Okay, um, so really we've got uh, two 10 meter circular arcs here. Both of them with 120 degrees as their sector angle. 10 meters, 10 meters, because it's a full 30, but 20 is pulled against the shed. So really the area is going to be 240 degrees out of 360 degrees of a full circle, so pi 30 meters squared, plus two copies of a third of a circle each. And those are going to have 10 meters squared. So we get two-thirds pi 900 meters squared plus two one-third pi 100 meters squared. Uh, so we can pull out the pi and the 100. Now well, I'll just pull out the two-thirds. So we'll do two-thirds pi and then 900 plus 100 meters squared. So the area is 2 thirds pi 1,000 meters squared, or 2,000 thirds pi. There's lots of ways you can write it uh, and express it equally valid. Uh, and that's, yeah, how large an area can the dog cover? There it is. Now, you do have to sort of explain what you're doing in this contest, but they gave you the picture, so you don't really have to explain the picture. 
Um, just ex you know, say these are circular sectors. Here are their angles. Uh, I guess figuring out these 60 degree angles, maybe explaining why it's 120 degrees would be worth some marks. But there's really not a whole lot to do here. As long as you understand how to get the area of a circular sector. You know, uh, it's, uh, if we're in degrees, it's out of 360. If we're in radians, it's out of 2 pi, which cancels out nicely with the pi here. But uh, they get things in degrees, so there you go. That's how we figure out the area of a circular sector. And that's the key formula you need for this one. All right, so that wraps up question five. That did not take us very long. I really wonder whether or not they intended to uh, have this picture here, if that's a typo. Not sure. Doesn't matter, because we're moving on to question number six, and it also has a, a picture here. Although not quite as detailed a one, but we'll get into that in the next video. I'll see you there.